Okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome to your uh, Sunday Weekly Collective. So good to see you today. Um, hopefully, you're all w awake and ready for this, just like Apollo woke up here. Uh, we have a really cool totem today that came through that I was inspired when I saw what you chose today, which is taking that leap of faith. Um, so turning a new page, taking a leap of faith. So uh, basically, we're going to use the kangaroo as our totem today to help us kind of get inspired and uh, get everything in the right trajectory. So thank you so much for voting on that. I know, buddy. Welcome. Um, let's talk a little bit about how I organize this, and then I'll get started. I'm going to put this guy down so he can get back to uh, to resting here in just a second. But I like to begin everything with channeled messages. Uh, the channel messages came to me as I researched <laughs> the totem. Thanks, buddy. Um, the totem for today. Uh, and then uh, basically also through dreams and meditation. So I have quite a few messages today. Hopefully we can get through all of those in a nice, timely fashion. Then uh, because it's a weekly, we'll be looking at the seven days here. So from Sunday to Sunday, the messages at the beginning are for everybody. And then once we get through that seven day forecast and then also look at blessings and blocks, I'll do some elemental energy looking at earth, air, water, fire, um, so that we can actually look at the signs and groupings. I don't go through all 12, I just group them by element. And after we do the elemental breakdown, then um, I usually throw out one topic for you to vote on based on what we're looking at. So after I've seen what the week is showing us, what some of the challenges or potential good things will be, then we can look at some questions that you can vote on. So some real time voting. And then we'll move on to the special topic. And the special topic again today is really being able, and I think this is such a good one as we're at the end of this year facing the next year, um, being able to really just make that leap and make something happen. And um, after we do that, then there's always a, a meditation and a final question at the end. The final question is where I give you a chance to ask back because everything that you see here uh, basically is, is general, but that's the one piece where you can really focus in on a specific question. It's also my sort of gift for anyone that <laughs> stays around until the end. So um, please do, if you can stick around, it's gonna be a great, I can already feel it, great energy in the room today. And it's gonna be a great sort of uh, reading for you too, because this is gonna help you move forward. Uh, so we're right on the precipice of 2022, and uh, and I want to help all of us kind of get into a better year ahead. Okay, just a couple of quick notes before I begin. Maria Margarita is my moderator today. She can answer any high level questions you might have. Let me go ahead quickly and um, let's see if I can if I can grab it. Or I may not have my information handy, so I'm just going to go ahead and put a link to my um, upcoming schedule here, which is right here. So upcoming schedule. And uh, from this link, you can also see information on my website. So I'm gonna pin that for now. And um, if you need to find some more information about me, like my social media and everything, it'll be on my website. Uh, if it's your first time here, please hit the subscribe button so you know when new things come through. You can also hit the like as well. That's gonna help with other people discovering it. Thank you so much to uh, the, the couple of folks that already gave back here, Susie S and, and Georgianne. Um, if you do that, I'll make sure at the very end to say thank you. And the way that you can give back and show some love while we're in this live presentation is through this little icon here. It's right by the emojis. And you can become a channel member. You can give a sticker. You can just say hi. Uh, and so thank you to anybody that does that in advance. Also, as I said, all the little notes that I write go on social media a couple days afterwards. So if you miss anything and you didn't get a chance to scribble it down, here are all my social media handles. Uh, Maria Margarita can put the link out there as well so that we have it. Oh, good. Uh, Dakota's here as well. So Dakota can also help if you have any questions. Um, and that's pretty much everything. One last thing, if you happen to be watching on replay, there's also a button called thanks or super thanks right by the share. And that's another way to show support. Okay. Let's get started. Again, this is for everybody. There'll be some specific sign um, areas here in just a moment, but right now it's everybody. So if you showed up today, you're going to get a message. This is for the next uh, seven days. There are some elements of this part of the, of the forecast that actually showed me some things for next year, and I'll identify that when I get to them. Let's first bring up a picture of your totem today. I think we're all pretty familiar with this lovely animal, but um, the kangaroo is what came through today. And we got a little joey there in uh, the pouch of that mama as well. Um, we'll do one more picture. One of the reasons I was really drawn to talk about this today was its ability to leap and move with, um, with ease, basically. And there's a lot of like grounding and balance that are a part of this particular totem today. So just one today, it's the kangaroo. It gives us a lot of things to talk about. The symbol uh, embodies a lot of different things. First of all, strength and speed. 
um, are the first things that I think of. Balance because of that tail. And then also the divine feminine. We saw a picture of a little Joey in the pouch there. So kind of get the best of everything with this symbol. The first thing that came to me today was like a frog. And I was like, eh. and then I thought, oh, kangaroo. And then it all came together. So <laughs> I just like this. It's, it's one of the biggest sort of marsupials. It has a lot of ability to move and um, it's it's fuzzy and kind of cute. So even though they're not always friendly, they can be a little protective of their children, but um, but they kind of have that warm, fuzzy feel. And I wasn't getting that with the frog as I was meditating on it this today. All right, they, pos they possess powerful hind legs and um, they belong to an animal, animal family called um, Macropus. I hope that I'm saying that correctly. Ba basically, this is Greek for a long foot or long footed. And um, not just are their feet sort of long, but they're also really big, as I said. They're over two meters tall, which is six feet, um, and they can leap up to nine meters or th uh, 30 feet. Uh, and I believe that they can also just go up in the air about six feet. And I'm not sure what that, I guess that would also be about two meters high too. So um, they can almost leap as tall as they are, and then they can go quite far. It looks like almost four to five times their, um, their height, which is kind of amazing. So when we're looking at that, even before I get into kind of breaking it down for you, you're forced to be reckoned with, right? You're, you're gonna stand out a little bit. The, even though I didn't write this, the kangaroo has some of that star energy because, uh, and six of wands energy, because it's not something that is inconspicuous. In fact, it is conspicuous. You see it, you notice it. It's powerful, it's the strength card, um, which is divine feminine as well. And you always see a sort of animal on that card, usually a lion on that. Uh, so you have this sort of strong divine feminine, very much star energy, all of it's feminine, actually, when I think of all the cards associated with it. But but these are good things because it's going to bring about growth and movement in your life, because that's what the divine feminine can do for us. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about some specific things that I wanted to highlight. First and foremost is balance. Those tails are not just there uh, to be impressive. Uh, they actually give them balance and help them land a little bit while they're jumping. So they hold, hold them in a certain way to kind of help uh, with their sort of like posture and their weight, but also while they're uh, jumping, it gives them this sort of sense of balance. By the way, once they are hopping along there, they can get up to um, 60 miles per hour, which is kind of crazy. Uh, I'm sorry, 60 kilometers per hour, which is about 37 miles per hour. So I don't know many humans that can do that. I don't know many animals that can do that. They can run pretty fast, which I think is great. Um, they remind us that balance is vital to movement. So part of the reason they can get that speed is the balance. So if you want to make a key change in your life, you can't do it without grounding and balance. Um, or you might also need some support. If you don't do this, what happens is your foundation can start to crack. Your spiritual foundation, your sort of energetic foundation. And so the more balanced you are, the more ready you are, um, the more you can kind of maintain this movement or speed. So what kind of balance are we talking about? can hit in a lot of different places. The cards will show us when I get into that, but right here and right now, we're looking at possibly like work-life balance. We could be looking at your fiscal health, balancing your checkbook, right? It's called balancing for a reason, making sure that you're, what you're uh, bringing in and what you're putting out isn't leaving you in the negative. Looking at mental health, something that we overlook so often, we look at physical before that, but I think mental health is so important. If you're not emotionally um, and sort of mentally fit and, and balance than everything else. It really doesn't matter that much. Then of course, physical fitness and overall well-being and spirituality plays a part in this as well. So it's not just money. So when I look at the two of pentacles, I look at all of those things. Where is the balance lacking in your life? Where can you put a little bit more energy, a little bit more uh, sort of focus? And once you kind of get that balance, then you can start the leaping, then you can start moving forward. But otherwise, uh, a lot of times when you look at a two of pentacles, you'll see someone walking on a tightrope or they're, they're kind of juggling things and they're not perfectly in alignment or balance. And without that, then it's hard to kind of pick up the pace or allow any movement to happen. If we were to imagine our house with a bunch of rooms, this is the equivalent of going through and making sure you're doing a deep cleaning, not just cleaning the like kitchen, living room, and the guest room. If someone's coming over, you really want to do a deep cleaning so the whole place looks good. Um, almost imagining that you were going to get ready to sell it and you want it to be show ready. So clean up the various parts of your life so that you can move on untethered, so that there's no sort of anchor that's holding you down, holding you back, making you question um, if you can do it, where you're headed, et cetera. So why is, 
why is all of this important? Because once you're able to like not be tethered by something, you can take a first step. The kangaroo, the first two or three leaps may not be very impressive, but once they get going, like I said, then they can get up to that 60 kilometers per hour or about just under 40 miles per hour. So you have to take one or two steps. You just have to get started. Um, once you do, momentum and speed will start to build, but you have to start somewhere. Don't fret so much about how long something might take you to finish or how much work might be required to make a shift or make a change or make something happen. You know why? Because others might be actually suffering with that same sort of paralyzing fear. If you can push through it and just think, well, let's just try this today. Let's see what this yields. Let's let's give, give it a week. Let me see where I, what I feel like at the end of this week. You're going to start to just sort of, it's, it's sort of like if you've ever been on a fitness journey and all of a sudden you notice something isn't fitting anymore because you've lost weight. You didn't notice because you were just sort of like keeping up, but, but the clothes don't lie or someone in your life says something, but it kind of takes that moment to get the feeling like, oh, I wanna keep this up because you're feeling better. You, you've noticed it now. So just because you're not noticing it doesn't mean that you're not moving forward. Um, so your ability to just go for it, or like Nike said, just do it. It's actually a great campaign. Um, it will allow you to step forward when others cannot or will not. And by doing that, just by taking a step every day, eventually you're going to be like 10 yards ahead of somebody else because you've been trying it. You've, you've been continuing, you've been pushing. And one day they're going to look at you and think, how did you get there? You may not know yourself. It's just because you took those little baby steps and it isn't noticeable until it's noticeable. And that sounds like overly simplistic, but you know what I'm talking about. Changes only really show up when there's been an aggregate of a lot of things happening. So even a spiritual journey, I'm sure many of you have, have started to work on yourself and someone will just say, what's going on in your life? Did you meet someone? You're glowing or whatever. And you could just think, no, I'm, I'm just happier than I used to be, or I'm just, I'm, I'm more balanced than I used to be. So focus on the little baby steps every day. And I think that's going to surprise you. So your challenge, if you want to, is to take the next seven days and see what you can accomplish and then try it another seven days. Take it to the end of this month so that when you get to January 1st, you can look back and think, wow, it's been a really interesting two or three weeks. I think I like where I'm at and I can't believe how far I've come. Let's keep doing it. OK, um, you know, the other thing that my guides are showing me is like a growth chart for little kids. Same thing going there. So maybe you could keep a sort of like a snapshot or a journal or something in your life where you can kind of notice how far you've come, because that'll help you with the motivation. OK. Let's talk a little bit more about our totem and then a couple of things that I didn't even write down on the table that I want to talk about as well as we've been discussing things here. So the joeys, which are the cute little babies in the pouch, of course, they have a close bond with their mothers. They're literally sitting in that pouch. Um, letting go of a symbolic baby for you, just like you were the mama, uh, you might be having difficulty sort of saying, OK, I'm ready to let this go. It feels like I just want to keep it here and kind of like make sure it's OK. What that really is, is like the four of pentacles. I just talked to the last sign that I read for, was it Leo? A little bit about the empress reversed and the four of pentacles energy. Um, it was either Leo or cancer. Um, but holding on when something needs to be released, it's counterproductive and it doesn't allow for something new to come in because you still have that pouch, that virtual sort of energy where you can let something kind of come in. So um, you have to release something. We'll talk a little bit about timelines with Joey's because that'll help you figure out when some of these release points will be. But let's talk a little bit more here. Um, basically, first and foremost, I think it is time for many of you that have been holding on to something to just give it some breathing space. Um, this can also be something that you've been working on for a while and you may be feeling like I'm stagnating. I'm not seeing what I need here. You can just go a little bit to the right, focus on something else and then come back to it um, because sometimes a little bit of space can give you clarity on what it is that you're doing or what it is that you're seeking. For some of you, it's completely done. This can happen a lot of times when you've been fidgeting with like, you know, renovating a house, trying to edit something like writing a novel or, or speech, or if you're an artist, you, you're going through and repainting something or whatever it is, you're going through and you're doing it so many times that you're losing some of the original uh, essence. So stop now and it's time to either walk away, get perspective or just let it go because Others will be more than impressed with what you've done. 
we often have the most critical eye ourselves. It's almost like we have the Ace of Swords reversed or Queen of Swords reversed, and we're looking at ourselves critically. So don't be so critical. See what other people have to say. Let some people in and, and, and see what the feedback is. Now let's look at some time markers from the joeys, these little, like, like I said, the little babies inside. So at four months, they start to venture out on their own. At 10 months, they're able to fend for themselves. So even though I'm looking at a week, I still want to sometimes give you markers for the next year. And so when we're looking at this, you know, four months would bring us to what, like March? And then um, I can't do the math on the 10 because we're still at 10, uh, 9, 8. So it'd probably be like August. So we're looking at like March and August of next year. You can do the math from whenever you've watched this. But um, four to 10 months is when you have two different points. The four month point is when you're feeling like the full energy stepping out there. The 10 months is when you're kind of like the world energy ready to kind of move on to something big. Um, and in between that, you have about six months of growth and, and expansion. So I feel like there's some really cool things happening. Two pivotal points for you, two sort of like mini graduations. Um, one is kind of like if you're in school, it's like the midterm and one is the final. <laughs> but you're kind of like it, like you have two points and neither of them take the whole year to, um, to happen because we're looking at it now and it's already like for here in the uh, Northern Hemisphere, it'd be like spring and, and the end of summer. And then you can do the math on the Southern Hemisphere. But um, but yeah, I feel like you've got some really cool movements happening for you. It's basically Q, uh, let's look at this again, if we were looking at the three, yeah, Q1 and Q3. So the one quarter mark and three quarter mark. So quarter one and quarter three, um, you're gonna have significant growth cycles happening for you. That means two and four are going to be about continuing the momentum. So the jumps happen, in the first quarter and then you keep the momentum going and then there's an even bigger jump in the third quarter and then you keep the momentum so it's kind of like a little chart where there's two two peaks and you don't want to go into a valley you just want to kind of like keep this moving up but there may be a little bit of a dip but you're going to keep moving up okay uh next piece of course because we're talking so much about mother and child maternal energy is going to be really important for you Nurture yourself. A lot of times when we see the divine feminine or a mother symbol, you're thinking, well, like maybe your mom isn't alive or maybe there's not a, any issues with that. A lot of times this can just be about the importance of uh, taking time to focus on you and your own happiness and your own well-being. So um, definitely prioritize that right now. And then also you could be working on just healing with existing relationships. Doesn't have to be familial. It can be, but it can also be your core relationships, friendship, or maybe your partnership that you're in, your, your love relationship. If there's any wounds, if there's any hard feelings, this is a time to work on healing at least yourself first, and then hopefully the relationship as well. Uh, as well. And um, it's also a good time to start something new. And the baby steps that you could be taking over the next week are very easy. It's starting with planning and visualizing and then doing some research like I do before I, I step in here. If I can do this in an hour, Imagine what you can do in seven days. Um, you know, I try to just pull it together so that I can figure out what I'm going to talk about. You have a lot of potential. You have more time. You're not, you're not, you don't have a deadline. Although deadlines are helpful. I love that I have to kind of like pull it together. I look at the clock and I think, all right, this is enough. It focus, it makes me focus. It takes me out of the seven of cups and it makes me focus on like an ace of pentacles. I don't have time to daydream when I'm getting ready here. So sometimes I have an hour and a half, sometimes I have an hour, sometimes I have 40 minutes and I have to pull all of these cards together and write them really fast. Um, and I've kind of done that on purpose because if I had three to five hours, the whole table would be filled. So deadlines are good. Set some deadlines for accountability for yourself. That's part of the reason it happened when we were in school. Um, teachers knew that without it, we may not get stuff done. So um, don't be afraid to kind of like dig in and focus on that. All right. Uh, let me look real quick. There are a couple things in dreams that I wanted to hit on that I didn't have a chance to write on the table. Um, okay, so one thing that I do think is important was if somebody tries to either um, push you in a direction that you don't want to be, or even I, I was getting like they're either advancing you or maybe even making an advance on uh, on you, sort of like expressing interest and you're not interested in them, it's going to be really important to speak up sooner than later because it looked like maybe because you wanted to be polite or you weren't sure what was going on you may you may have had a hard time sort of putting your foot down remember this symbol is kind of called like long-footed or big-footed so i want you to go ahead and speak up and ask a question so rather than putting your foot in your mouth 
just say, what did you mean by that? Or what are you asking or what, what's going on? So you may not be able to infer what they're trying to say. So ask and say, um, what's your intention here? Or what's, what's your MO? What are you trying to do? And then, then you can understand if you want to be a part of that. Because um, I saw someone like driving in a taxi and they were kind of reaching back to, 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 to get something, but they brushed across you and it just was sort of a weird sort of thing. So it's like, is someone reaching into your territory? Are they trying to kind of get into your energy? Do they want to involve you in something? There was something about it that felt odd and it felt like they were trying to pull you in a direction that you didn't want to go. That's usually what a taxi means when I see something intuitively. So you are driving the, the, the car here or the chariot and you get to decide where you want to be and you're not going to let someone kind of like reach across your territory unless you want that. Okay. So that was a, an interesting little thing that I wanted to make sure that I um, shared with you. And I think that's key. All right. So we've got everything that we need now and we're going to get into your seven day forecast. So let me go ahead and stack up all of these cards. Like I said, if you miss any of the note cards, I'll post them on social media, usually by tomorrow. A lot of times I do two days at once, so I might do Monday and Sunday together. But um, you can follow me on social media, and my moderators can put a link out for the social media if you need some information on that. All right. Hopefully everyone's doing well today. Good to see you. Um, let's go ahead now and take a look at um, the seven-day forecast here. I think I'm going to use the Afro Goddess uh, for this portion here. And uh, thank you, Dakota. I'm also going to pin... The link here so that uh, you can get that if you need it. So I appreciate you sharing that with everyone. Let's go ahead and see what's coming through from Sunday to Sunday. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. This is going to be an interesting week for you. <laughs> Friday, a lot of movement. Um, I'm excited by some of the cards that I see. And then we got Saturday and Sunday. Okay, it's looking good. Lots, lots of shifts, lots of changes. So let me pull the camera up and we'll talk about what I see. Today, is, it's such a timely card to come up for the topic of taking a leap of faith and starting a new page. We've got the Hanged Man and she's reversed here. So with the Hanged Man reversed, uh, remember here, like if you look at it upright, you can see the power symbol, the Ankh, like from Egyptian mythology, which in and of itself is a reminder of our ability to have like an eternal life. Like nothing, there's really no ending to something. We we have uh, like maybe this this body, this this lifetime is a singular point on a continuum, but you're never really stopping. You're never really ending with this. And so this is a reminder that sometimes it seems like the world, like Chicken Little, the, the sky is falling, but it's not really. It's just a new page and a new beginning. So be patient with yourself. Hanged Man Reverse is often coming through for us when we feel like, uh-oh, um, this isn't happening fast enough. Am I doing something wrong? Why am I not seeing the movement that I need, et cetera? And so this is saying just to have a little bit more faith. Uh, with Hanged Man, as you know, the pause that you have, or if you don't, I'm going to remind you, um, the pause is necessary to gain knowledge. Thor hung upside, not, not Thor, Odin hung upside down on the tree of knowledge to, get, to gain inside in the runes. It took time, it took time, a little bit of blood, a little bit of, um, a little bit of energy. So for all of us, the, the blood, sweat and tears, the sort of waiting period that we have, it's not for nothing. Um, it sounds like a double, double neg negative, but you know what I mean? It's sort of, it's not in vain. So trust yourself, and I would say just focus on shifting your perspective today and thinking, all right, this is something that seems like it's, I've done as much as I can. I may not be able to put any additional energy or effort or control into that. I can control this. Um, you know, I can't make someone think differently, but I can try, try uh, my own reaction I can adjust. I can do this, I can do that. Focus on the things that you know you can control Trust that the work that you've done will eventually pay off. Breathe and be patient today. So this is for Sunday. For those of you that are in Australia or um, you know China or whatever, where it's like already several hours in advance, 
this is a reminder from yesterday as well. And just kind of like as the day starts to be patient, to have faith and to know that things are going to be better. Monday looks pretty good here. Expect to see some good things on Monday. We have the Page of Cups, the Daughter of Cups in this deck coming through. And it's saying, hey, I've got like a happy surprise or my I'm just feeling better in my mood or someone around me is really interested in connecting and I see an, a sort of something that I didn't expect. So this is a really kind of cool tip on manifestation overall. If you can just think to yourself, maybe today's the day that something great is going to happen. I'm ready to hear some good news. Sometimes I even say that to one of my family members that I talk to on the phone a lot. I'm just like, all right, I'm ready for some good news. That's that's my way of complaining because <laughs> sometimes I'm like sick of things not going in the right way. So instead of saying, oh, my God, I haven't had any luck. This is I'm so upset. I'll just say, all right, I'm really ready now to receive some good news. Uh, I'm, I'm done with the old stuff. I'm ready for the new. And so maybe that can be your mantra at the beginning of the week. I'm ready for some good news. I'm ready to receive love and abundance in the highest forms. Bring it on. Good day for relationships. Good day to put out any sort of messaging that you want. Um, if you need to have a difficult conversation, people seem more receptive. It's a very strong, powerful day. You're going to have a good start to the week, okay? Um, and maybe someone's interested in you. Like I said, make sure that if you're not interested that you say that. But if you are, then this is a good sort of thing for those of you that are single and happy. If you're in a relationship or if you are um, just not that interested, uh, I would say this is still a good card for being able to partner up and to, uh, to sort of connect and, and get things moving. So you've got good people energy around you on Monday. Tuesday's a good day for making some changes happen. We have the Fool, one of my favorite Fool cards here. She's not really bothered by anything that's going on. The thing with the Fool card is some of you could work on letting go a little bit. This is the leap card. This is the leap of faith, actually, because when I think of the leap of faith, I think of the Fool. It's a new step, a new beginning. So there's something that's kind of still maybe on Tuesday holding you back a little bit. And you're thinking, can I do it? Should I do it? I feel like the momentum that you've been building on these two days is saying that, yeah, it's going to happen. So the reversal on this is just saying, don't edit yourself too much. Trust that you have the vision, that you have the skills, that you have the wherewithal uh, to really take that next step and make it happen, because I think you do. One thing uh, that we can learn from the fool is the importance of <clears throat> not carrying too much baggage. So. If you've had some difficulty, either in an experience, like it can be, you know, trying to get something done, there could be someone in your life that just drives you crazy. Um, this card is coming through to say, today I'm, I'm choosing to not make that a big thing. I'm going to let it go for today. I'm, I'm going to see what else I can focus on. So by letting go of energetic baggage, the fool gives you what you need to step into something brighter, something better. Okay. So let it go is what this is saying. We have the tower on Wednesday. I'm one of the few people that probably isn't afraid of seeing a tower card because it shows changes. And I look at the uh, sort of aggregate energy and what's been building up to it. So we see that some of you have been waiting for a change. Then we see that you've had a really kind of positive beginning to the week. You've started to take um, the leap. And then, of course, I would expect for things to start to shift. So this is a day where if we look at the most positive read of the tower, I would say you finally start to notice change. When it happens, it happens swiftly and quickly. If you say or do something, you might notice that there's a lot of action taken. If you're someone that's trying to uh, make sure that we see here a traditional structure like the White House and we see people jumping out of the White House. Um, so what could happen is there could be a hierarchy, a business, a school, an administrative sort of thing. And finally, there's something where there's been a policy change or a policy shift or a paradigm shift. So something changes. It could be in here. It could be externally. This is going to begin a new sort of momentum. When we go all the way forward to next uh, Sunday, rather, we have the Wheel of Fortune. So I think this is an advantageous tower. What you want to do in a tower event is keep your head on straight. <laughs> Make sure that you're kind of aware of what's going on. Move with the action. Don't move against it. Um, you know, if, if change is, is coming through, embrace it, acknowledge it, decide, do I want to be a part of it or am I moving on? Because the change is going to happen no matter what. This isn't a reverse tower. So it does feel like you have a choice to stay or go, but you can't necessarily change it per se. 
So try to kind of see what happens as a result of this. And then you can be the tower in the most positive way, which is I'm going to change things up. I'm going to shake up the tree. We're going to really create something bigger, better, brighter. Okay. So the only thing that could be difficult on Wednesday is keeping your train of thought. Uh, there could be a little bit of uh, chaos around you. So if you work at a company, people may be disorganized. They may not be listening. There could be in a family, the same thing could be going on where just people are having a hard time staying grounded. So you're going to use your kangaroo tail, figuratively speaking, and try to put your feet on the ground and, and your tail on the ground and say, this is where I'm doing. This is what I'm doing. This is where I'm going. I know this is scary, but I'm okay. Thursday looks a lot better. You actually have some clarity. This is one of my favorite judgment cards uh, in any deck. So this is about taking that first step. We see you're starting to go up the staircase. If we go to the very top, we can see um, butterflies and like greener pastures. And really what's necessary is a decision that I'm ready to do this. I'm ready to go there. Okay. Judgment is about accepting sometimes what is inevitable, what has been going on around you. It's not so much the decision. The decision is justice. Judgment is I understand it. And I either choose this path or this path. And also, if I've had some trouble, if I've had some challenges, I'm rising above them. This is the ashes. This is a phoenix rising from the ashes. Normally in this card, you would see a bunch of people rising from the dead. You would see Gabriel. We have some different imagery here. Um, it could be Horus. It could be anything coming through here. But we see reincarnation, and that's the main thing. You get to try again. It could be second chances. You get to do better. You get to start fresh, whatever you want. So I think that... Um, yeah, Thursday is an amazing day. And you're right. We have like no less than four. Let's see. Arcana. There's a lot going on this week. It's a busy week. We got the, we have the holidays right on the precipice here in a couple weeks, right? Two to three weeks, depending on what holidays you celebrate. Um, everybody's going to be a part of New Year's, but we also have Christmas and, uh, and other events right now. So there's a lot going on. And I think we have to wrap things up pretty quick. Time is this week. What are you trying to do next what are you trying to do next year? You, you've had even like silly things like choosing your health care provider and stuff like that. It happens now, like enrollment is going on. So yeah, you have like a week or two to get everything done. And this, this year's over, people. We're almost there. So let's start focusing on making the decisions so the next year can be amazing. All right, Friday's a great day. We've gone from all that movement. At the beginning, we had a people day. And now at the end, we have like a people day. Uh, we have the four of wands, which tells me that you, um, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's four of wands. It's reversed when I look at it in the in the camera here. So for, four of wands here is setting you up um, for friendship, for firm foundations. So if something got a little messy midweek, maybe you had an argument, maybe you had a disagreement, maybe you couldn't meet eye to eye. What we see on th uh, Thursday is that you you both kind of find a way out of this. And Friday, there's there's sort of this sort of harmony that's coming through, which I like. Uh, this is also setting into motion, even if this person or this opportunity doesn't exist yet. Usually the four of wands is absent of people. You just see the four different wands. And there's this setting here for a partnership, love, friendship, monogamy, something that you can trust, someone that you can trust. So what I see here is that you're getting a beacon of that coming through, or you've made the decision or you're setting the table, the foundation for that. So it's a good day. This is a great day for negotiations, for, for going out on a date, for hanging out with people, for talking to family. Um, I would say arguably as strong, if not stronger than the Page of Cups, even though this is a court card, just because this carries with it very positive connotations. Four of Wands, even in reverse, tells me that you're going to find a way back to remembering like what you liked about a person, a place or a thing and being able to kind of focus on the, the positive. All right. So you have a powerful week ahead of you. Again, so many changes, so many um, shifts, but you end with some optimism. Uh, you start and end with like optimism, which I like. Let's look at the weekend and then we'll focus on blessings and blocks. All right. So for Saturday, you, you all, if you watch this, you know that she's one of my favorite court cards. So we have the Queen of Wands. She's magic. She has that black cat. She's tuned into her intuition. She's usually in a desert and can make anything happen. Limited resources, but amazing results. So if, if one of the balance areas that you are struggling in right now is financial stability, she's coming through to show you that because of the decisive sort of energy that's coming through with this judgment card, I know what I need to change. Because you've made some of the changes, because you've maybe let go of some of the habits, 
then you're starting to set up this new foundation and this new energy coming through. You'll find a way. She's very resourceful. The only thing that we need to watch is she came through in reverse. So the positive of the reverse queen of wands is when you truly know something, it's kind of like you're unshakable, unstoppable. So I like it. I like it when we can kind of lean into that kind of energy of strength. However, if there is some sort of an indication that a change is necessary, sometimes the queen of wands reversed is a little slow on the uptake because she's so strong, powerful, sure of herself that she may be a little bit un uh, uncertain of going towards a path of change. So don't be afraid to make a change, to embrace a change in your life. Um, it will be something that you can manage. It should be for the better, okay? I love what I see for next Sunday. It's a change of fortune. We have the wheel of fortune in reverse, uh, change in direction. I see this card as like a compass card. Um, it's positive, usually no matter what, but it does show me that some of you could be focusing a little bit more on being more productive, being more um, just sort of like resourceful in general. So she's coming through to teach you how to, how to manage time and resources. And that's your big challenge for next Sunday is making the most of time and resources, okay? Are you going to be the one that's on top of the Wheel of Fortune or the one that's holding it up? So the card is reversed, which for some of you is saying, I'm not going to try to um, be everybody else's sort of like support beam. I need to do that for myself right now. So that that anchor, the tail that we were looking at with the kangaroo earlier, has a big part of uh, this sort of story here, which is you have to make sure you're supporting yourself too. And if you are someone that's a caretaker, first and foremost, you have to make sure that you're okay. Your time, your energy, your physical health, all of that is taken care of, okay? This is auspicious um, uh, as well because it shows me that you could get some good news about money or for those of you that might be trying to make a big purchase like a house, trying to get an apartment, trying to sell something, this can be um, positive. But it is reverse, which shows me negotiations might be a part of this, but I still like what I'm seeing. So, you know, just a quick overview of everything here. I like what I'm seeing today. It's about patience. Monday, it's a great day for connecting with people, reminding you that your inspiration, your passion, your excitement is infectious in a positive way. So stay positive. Expect something good to happen. Let go on Tuesday. Take the first step. We were talking about, um, you know, vision work, planning and research. This is a good day for that. And don't hold yourself back. Don't edit. When you decide to do something, Wednesday's the day where everything starts to kind of like go into motion. You may notice some people move towards you, some people move away from you. There's gonna be some big shifts happening midweek. I like what I see on Thursday. Um, Thursday, you've gotten some clarity on where you stand and where others stand. Don't get pulled into someone else's mess. That's one thing that I like to say about the midweek. Friday, if there was anything that went astray or askew in the midweek, you have a chance now to get on some common ground. On the weekend, it's all about resource, time, and energy management, okay? So love what I'm looking at here. Let me see if I can find the Oracle deck that's associated with this. If I can, I'll use it. If not, I'll just use the same deck. I moved it the other day, and it's out of sight. Here it is, okay. So let's go ahead, and we'll stick with the Afro Goddess, and I'm going to use the uh, Oracle deck, and we're going to look at a blessing and a block, and then we'll move on to the elements after that. So blessings are just like they sound, something to look forward to. Blocks, same thing, things that you want to try to avoid or work around. So we'll start with the blessing here. And then <laughs> we've got death coming through, and then we'll look at the block. Okay, so let me pull the camera up, and we'll talk about what we're seeing. So the coffin card. In tarot, the thing that would I would most closely associate with this is four of swords. Um, usually you will actually see a sepulcher or a coffin, and... Um, someone kind of resting in that. It doesn't mean that it, it's not literal. Um, if I see the coffin or the four of swords, it does mean putting something to rest. So, <clears throat> excuse me, if there's something in your life where you feel like, I'm just really finished with it, right? It could be the final straw that breaks the camel's back. Um, what I'm looking at next week is you get clarity on what it is you're going to release. Usually the four of swords is a gentle card, um, so if you, it, it basically, if I could give it a, a sort of subtitle right now, what I would say is time heals everything and, um, maybe even everything in its own time. But as time passes, 
you get less and less attached to something that was bothering you. So the blessing is this sort of peace. It's a very peaceful card. I always see the Four of Swords as peaceful. I see the Six of Swords as seeking that peace, moving on, taking the first step, grieving a little bit. But by the time the Four of Swords happens, you're usually already there. And I know that there's some weird, sometimes it doesn't always work chronologically in the suits, like Three of Pentacles is better than Eight of Pentacles. Um, Four of Swords is more peaceful than the Six of Swords, which requires more movement and more work on your part. And then of course, death is the thing that kind of, for all of us, can be a little bit more difficult to deal with. So it feels to me like you're putting something to rest, putting something on the back, but just you're done with something. And that's actually a blessing. There's some peace. You're gonna be able to find peace of mind, okay? Good, good things come from this. Remember what we saw Thursday. You get to actually experience the um, benefit of that. If you can do that sooner than later, this is the re reincarnation card. If this is the death card, this is reincarnation. So you get to bounce back on Thursday. Wednesday may be the most difficult day when you're kind of working through stuff like this, but you're feeling that, that jump, that burst of energy coming through again on Thursday. So putting something to rest, letting something go, burying it and saying enough is enough. <laughs> so I kind of like that. That's an interesting blessing card. Uh, um, uh, now for your block here, we've got the moon card and the moon. I'm not surprised. The moon is often kind of like a tricky symbol in tarot. I like it because it's divine feminine and everything that we were talking about in your totem today had to do with divine feminine. Um, the moon card does have to deal also, though, with things like fears, anxieties, hopes and desires, passions. So we want to go into the, the primal sort of energy of our life and make sure that we're OK with that as well. So if there's something in a relationship, this is about telling the truth. So if there's something where you feel like you haven't been honest with your partner or vice versa, this is the time to really clear the air and find that honesty. If there's something that you're afraid to do and you need help, this card says the way that you can get through that is simply by reaching out and leaning on someone. Um, one of the totems this week for one of the signs was the ant. And I showed this image of ants crossing a bridge. I might still have it on my iPad, but... Um, if I don't, you can, you can just kind of visualize, but one cool thing that ants will do sometimes if they can't cross uh, a certain, let's see, I do have it actually. So they can create this sort of living bridge, which I think is so cool. So uh, sometimes there's power in numbers and this indicates what a lot of times human beings forget, which is um, asking for help, leaning on someone. It isn't a sign of weakness. Ants create strength by connecting like that. So lean on someone, talk to someone, work through the emotional things that you're feeling. Uh, so, you know, some of you that have either lost someone, this could be a loss. I see someone lost a job. You might have lost someone in your life. This is about how to deal with that. Um, and knowing that there's even some sort of a, there's something positive that's going to come out of this experience that's unexpected. I've lost jobs around the holiday season too. When I was uh, much younger, kind of fresh out of college, one of my first jobs uh, during the U.S. Thanksgiving time, I, I visited a family member, and <laughs> as I was getting ready to eat Thanksgiving dinner, um, I got a, a, a message on my Palm Pilot back in the day. This was like pre, <laughs> pre BlackBerry um, and pre iPhone, but I got a note saying you've been laid off. Like it was during the dot com layoffs and all of that, so I wasn't really surprised, but it wasn't what I wanted to kind of get when I went to Thanksgiving dinner. But it helped me kind of set a new trajectory for what came next in my life. I was going through like a six month shift and then I ended up getting one of the best jobs in my career because I had to like let go of a certain path. So, um, and I moved, I moved from the Northern part of the state to the Southern part. So the, the, the loss of a job wasn't fun, but the trajectory that I took because of it was amazing. So I'm grateful that I lost that job at that time because the next year I had to force myself into a sort of new trajectory. You never know what one loss can bring you. So that's why the, the blessing was for some of you a loss of something. Um, and then we see something unexpected here, but you have to get past the fear, the anxiety, the anger, the frustration, but you have to move through those emotions. You can't dismiss them. So experience them, express them, lean on someone and see where it takes you. For those of you that are in a really great place, we just see for, for you that a season is coming to pass and change. There's something new on the horizon. Lean into your dreams. Focus on what um, you're really being sort of guided to do. See where that leads you. Okay. Let's go ahead now and take a look at 
the uh, elemental portion here. So I'm going to clear clear out some space and figure out which deck am I going to use. I think I'm going to use the Light Seer deck if I can find it. Um, and then we're going to see what's coming through for Earth, Air, Water, Fire, etc. All right. So this is the one portion of today's reading that is specific to the elements. You can use it for any placement in your chart. So just like all of my monthlies, you can kind of apply it as, as you will. And I'll remind you as I pull the cards what elements are uh, what signs. Okay, so let me give this a shuffle. I'll pull the cards and then I'll talk about them specifically. By the way, um, usually later today, I always put time codes in the video uh, or timestamps so you'll be able to rewatch this portion later because uh, I know it may be useful for all of you. All right, so we'll do fire, which is Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. Then we'll do Earth, which is Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. Then we'll look at Air, Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. And Libra came through really strong in that. And then we're going to look at Water, which is Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. Okay. So let's see what we're talking about this week. Starting again with Fire, Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius, you got the Nine of Wands. I actually really like this card. Um, the Nine of Wands reminds you not to give up. You've worked really hard to get to this point in your life. The next week could be testing your resolve and, and is basically, the universe is basically saying, don't give up. She is using all of this experience for better or for worse to find her fire, to find her strength. Um, let me put on my glasses. This is an unusual deck because usually they would show that you're a little worse for the wear. So I'm not seeing that on her. I kind of like that. But normally we would see right around the head, like a bandage. Um, and we would also sometimes see like some tattered clothes. Uh, it doesn't really look like they're tattered. It just looks fashionable to me. So the only thing that I would kind of take issue with on this card is that you normally should see a little bit of struggle, but she still has to get past this perceived barrier. So again, for all of the uh, fire signs, I want you not to give up. Focus on progress made and then also grounding yourself in why you decided to do what you're doing. Um, some health things that could pop up this week are uh, sometimes a headache or a migraine. Um, make sure that you're not suffering from low blood sugar if you're working too much and you haven't had enough to eat. Um, this usually affects the head because of the, the wound on that. And it could also be like a third eye awakening, but your, your head is the most sort of important thing. So ideation, mental health, any sort of pain that you're feeling, again, you should always talk to a doctor. Standard disclaimer applies with health. Um, so make sure that, that that takes place there. But overall, this is a good, good card. It's telling me that you are like 90% of the way there. You're going to be able to finish it. Just uh, push through this sort of fear or anxiety, okay? Thank you so much. Uh, by the way, Golden Ratio Terrio and everyone else who's given back, I'll make sure to say thank you later. But that was really, that was amazing. Um, so there you go to all of the fire signs. You can do this. You've got this. And it's actually going to be a great week. Just take care of yourself. Don't overthink and, um, and find that sort of inner strength. And I think you'll be in a great place. Let's move on to the next element, which is Earth. So Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. Okay, so for my Earth signs out there, um, we have the Ace of Swords. This is really cool. Um, and I love the illustration on this one. If it, someone said, my guides love me to pull this one. And I, I, I agree, it comes up almost all the time. But for you, when I'm looking at this, your thoughts have this ability to really take flight right now. Uh, so I want you to do something to either put it on paper. We can see all of these sort of like equations and drawings here or talk to someone, we see the crow or the raven coming out of the head. Um, so to me, whenever I see birds, this has to do with communication. So really talk to someone and take this idea and bring it to the next level. I have to, when I have dreams, uh, if you wonder how I do it, you can either dictate it in your watch or your phone and like get it like voice recognition or do a memo, uh, or I type it sometimes. And when I wake up, I think, what was I typing? Because it's sometimes a mess, but I have to record it. If I don't record what I think, then it's harder for me to access it and I have to go back into my, my dreams. So that's how you remember your dreams. You're going to have to write them down. Same thing with ideas. Uh, you know, a lot of the musicians that are out there, they will keep an old fashioned journal with them. And anytime something comes, they'll just scribble it in. You never know when that's going to be a song lyric or an idea for something. So uh, I want you to write it down and record it. 
Uh, you have the ability right now, of, again, this is a really good card for writing in general. So if you are a writer or if you're a mathematician or a scientist, maybe you're putting together some sort of a proposal, a pitch, a curriculum, a paper, or a book. There's something here with the power of writing or you're taking a test. Um, and that's going to be really, really important. Don't freak yourself out. I remember back to when I used to take, I wasn't a great sort of like, um, uh, and I'll answer the question here from uh, my moderator in a second, but I wasn't great at taking organized um, tests like SATs and GREs and all of that, but I can apply my knowledge very, very well. So don't freak yourself out. If I could go back and help my younger self, what I would do is say, You're, you've got everything you need, just take a deep breath and go there. So the, the decks that I've been using here, this is the Light Sears deck. Um, Maria or Dakota can put a link to my website. This is Light Sears. This is Afro Goddess. And I'm using one of the oracles associated with that too. All right, so back to the cards here. Um, last thing that I would say with this is, let me see here if there's anything else. Oh, to focus, concentration. <laughs> so focus on one thing at a time if you can. If you might be in a place where you're multitasking, I would say it's really important for you during this period of multitasking uh, to focus on uh, just kind of like thinking, what can I do the best with right now? So if we had the two of pentacles, this would be saying, all right, I'm going to move from the two of pentacles and I'm just going to take one of these and do something with it. Okay. So that kind of sums up everything for earth. Let's move on to air. Um, so we're going to be looking at Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. So you're getting permission to say no, to, to quit, to move on, to release. Justice reversed is 99% of the time about sort of letting it go and saying, I don't want to. <laughs> like a little kid, I don't want to. So if you don't want to do something, if you're tired of something, if you've been waiting for that moment to say, this is the line and I'm not going to go any further, or this is a line and you've crossed it, then, then it's, this, is, this is basically what this card is saying. This is also saying for you to find the balance that you need and that you deserve. I love that the Justice Reverse card is awake and strong. She's not, it's not a negative sort of thing. We see a very peaceful justice upright. Um, everything's peachy. But when sometimes it takes a sort of shift in our life to get that strength and get that power to say, I know what I don't want. And when I know what I don't want, I'm going to go after what I want even more because of that. So you're getting some clarity on what you're not looking for. And don't be upset because maybe you had to go through that. Be grateful that you understand what you like and what you don't like. And this is basically the duality that we're seeing here in this card. Um, so when... It's great when things are balanced, but sometimes when they're imbalanced, it kind of really shifts us into the better trajectory, okay? If you are a Libra, it's a great week ahead. You came through really strong. Your voice is important. Use your voice. If you're any other of the air signs, uh, Gemini or Aquarius, I think the important thing for you is you don't have to do everything for everyone, okay? So for the other signs uh, that are part of this element, I would say you are not sort of like Atlas balancing the world's weight. You don't have to do it all. You, you get to decide how much, when, or if. And this is very decisive and very strong. And I like that we see a positive justice reverse. And I like for all of you out there that are uh, <laughs> haters on the reversals, they're important. That's why we actually see an illustration. I have a special deck that has two sides to it. There's two sides to every coin. You just wouldn't only look at the, the front of a coin. Um, you would always look at the flip side. So the flip side is saying you're learning something from this challenge. You're going to go through it. Uh, Air signs, I feel like midweek, you've got that clarity. By the end of the week, you're, you're moving on. It's going to be pretty good. And again, everything that we've been looking at really strikes a chord with the air signs because you're ready to let something go. And that was part of what I was mentioning with the kangaroo, the importance of that release into allowing for movement or hopping forward, okay? Um, if you're in a relationship or a job, you may be deciding to move on, to quit, to say goodbye, okay? So all of that. Okay. And just the power of saying no. This is what I like with Justice Reverse. All right, let's go to the final thing that I'll be reading in the elements, which is water, Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. Okay, so we've got the Nine of Swords for you. Um, what I will say with the Nine of Swords is things are rarely as challenging as they seem. Oftentimes, we end up building up almost like this dramatic script in our head, almost as if it was going to be something for television or a movie, uh, because it just... We're going too far too fast. And I would say, take a deep breath and think to yourself, as I said earlier, what can I actually do about this? 
if if the if the something's already been spilled, wine, milk, water. <laughs> I recently had um, I spilled some water on some equipment, which is why I had like a different setup last week, and it didn't end up hurting it. By the way, I I, I worked really fast and I unplugged everything and it was fine. Um, so instead of kind of existing, I had like one day of nine of swords and I thought it's done and I'm just going to trust that we're good. And I acted fast and it did. So sometimes things happen. The glass breaks in the kitchen, the water spills on the TV, you drop your phone in the sand or something, whatever it is, you just have to kind of like pick yourself up after that moment and think, well, what can I do about this? What's next? And oftentimes there's a blessing and you can focus on something else. We see one bird here that's in the in the light. We see a lot of others that are kind of like in that darker energy. So I want you to stay on the light side of things. Um, and you might be pleasantly surprised like I was. Something can work out. Nothing needed to be done. I just needed to take a deep breath and focus on doing work and doing other things that I could control. So it helped me just sort of ground myself. I thought, what are you, what are you freaking out about? Um, I want you to focus on sleep, sleep quality. Um, not so much quantity, but quality. Are you stressed out when you're going to bed? Are you kind of going through a, a, a list of things that you need to be doing? If you are, make sure that before you go to bed, you create that list and you think, tomorrow I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to handle this. I'll be okay. Um, listen to something, music, a podcast, um, meditation, something to kind of help you. Also make sure that you're not drinking caffeine or that you're not sort of like watching something scary or, or um, disturbing before you go to bed shouldn't be probably watching the 11 o'clock news or a horror movie or talking, uh, like looking at social media. If, if there's a bunch of stuff there, that's kind of getting you upset, tune into something better, read a book, um, spend time with your cat, your dog, your family, your friend, um, you know, do something nice, take a walk before you go to bed, something to just sort of shift the mental gear. If you are having, having any sleep issues, talk to a doctor. Sometimes it's surprising what could be causing this. It could be a chemical imbalance. It could be a dietary issue. It could be something like sleep apnea. Whatever it is, take care, take care of that. We also see the pillow here. How long have you had your pillow before you've replaced it? Make sure that you've got enough neck and back support um, when you're sleeping as well, okay? So stress management is the name of the game. Focusing and changing the, the program and looking at something that you can control is gonna be key. And um, you know, I think if you do that, you're going to be just fine. A lot of times this is just about stressing out and stressing too much. So whatever you need to do to kind of balance yourself, water signs, do that and, and make sure you get the support that you need. Okay. All right. Let's take a look now at a question that you might be able to uh, vote on here. So I, I always like to throw one out for viewer poll here, just in case you didn't get a chance to vote on the one that we're going to be doing next. Um, this is your chance to kind of give back here. So I'm going to do three questions based on all the cards that I'm looking at. Give me a second to type it, and then you'll have a chance to vote on it. All right. So we've got some big major arcana cards here with the tower and the judgment card. So I want to look at navigating change. I think that's going to be really important. And even if it doesn't get picked, it's probably one that I will, I will look at. So let me look at viewer's choice. Navigating change. The other thing that comes through is making up your mind because of the judgment uh, card. So uh, making up your mind. I'm going to also put acceptance. And I think for the third one here, um, we did see sort of like stress management, which I think kind of fits nicely with all of these, even if you're not water signs. So I'll also put stress management. So I'm happy to pull a card on any of these. You guys can pull. I'll do a wild card while you're doing that. Um, I'll give you about a minute to put in that vote. And then we're going to pull one card here for just anything that we might have missed. Overall, uh, sort of like advice for the week ahead. Okay, Queen of Swords in reverse. Um, so speak your mind, get in and get out of a, a conversation if you need to, don't sort of like, don't put your foot in your mouth because kangaroos have that sort of long foot as a part of their Greek name or their scientific name. So I actually love and defend the Queen of Swords in reverse. She gets a bad rap. She's good at saying what she needs to say, but not sort of lingering. And I think as long as you do that, you're gonna be a-okay. Use your voice, speak the truth, don't be cruel <laughs> and um, get, in, get, get in and get out of a negotiation. And if you do that, you're going to be in a good place. All right. Uh, I've given enough of you a chance to vote that I see that we have a dead tie. So I'm going to read both of these. Okay. 
So navigating change and the second one, I forget. Give me a second here to put my glasses on and read it. So you voted for a tie, like pretty, pretty close here. It was like 42, 42 for a while. So navigating change and making up your mind. These are the ones I would have picked too. So um, when it's that close, when it's like spot on or one percentage off, I read them both. All right. So let's look at the first one, navigating the change. The tower and the judgment card, really important. Really the tower mostly we're going to look at. So the tower. Okay. Everything is going to be okay. We have the three of wands here. So although the card is reversed, it's telling me that you are going to see positive results sooner than expected. Um, this card is about like this energetic shift or, or shockwave that's happening. And this card is a surfing card. And I always kind of like compare the tower to a wave that you could surf. So I love that we got the surfer coming through for this. Um, so what she's saying here is I can handle this. I choose to handle this. I choose to work through it. And I am going to find something positive because of this. She's not waiting for things to come to her. She's going to move toward those things. So let me give you a tangible example on this. If you're in a relationship and you're hitting rocky waters, then what you want to do is talk to your partner and say, um, I, I really want to work through this with you. Let's talk about this. You initiate the conversation. If you're in a company and you know that there's a merger or a change of boss or something that's happening, you want to talk to the powers that be to state your interest in what your next job or responsibility could, could be. You, you just basically become an active um, advocate and agent. You're your own agent, okay? If you can see the positive, there could be a positive. If you only see the negative, you negate the three of wands. So the, the big, big idea for this one is that as long as you can see a silver lining, you'll find a silver lining, okay? If you choose to not, then you're just going to see the chaos and the change, and then you feel left behind. She's going out to meet the wave. She's not going to let the wave get away from her, okay? All right. So looking at the second question, it was making up your mind and accepting. So judgment can kind of have both of those connotations uh, where it can be accepting someone else's decision, accepting change, or um, just really sort of like deciding this is what I want and this is how, what I'm going to do about it. So with those things in mind, let's take a look here at what's coming through. All right. Okay, so we have the Knight of Wands, which I really, really like. And this is a softer version of Queen of Wands energy, which we got for um, the Saturday uh, sort of card. So what we see with the Knight of Wands for this, this particular deck, I love that the Knights are either um, women or gender neutral. You can't really tell. Um, so for this particular Knight, we see someone who is, first of all, the horse is like a wild steed and she is marching to the beat of her own drum. You actually see the fire coming from the drum. So as you sort of set the tone, set the pace, set the rhythm, things start to happen. The acceptance piece is I have the power to like, okay, if you have a band and you have a bad drummer or no drummer, it's very hard for the musicians to be able to kind of like pace themselves, right? So you're actually more integral to people around you than you, than you might imagine. So when you own that, then you actually have more power than you, you might think. And you can change things more just by deciding how quickly you're going to move, how much focus you're going to do on this. What, what the cadence is going to be. So there is this sort of rhythmic energy that I would say with the acceptance is, that is important. So not every day is going to be blockbuster, you know, <laughs> fireworks and everything, but you want to kind of just keep creating momentum. You set the pace, you set the tone, you can get through this. You can, um, you can basically, the band goes on with, with you, um, not without you. So you will attract a new sort of like following if you need to. And those other people are going to have to find someone else to sort of be their core. So I see you just finding your power, your importance, and you're going to set the pace and the tone for um, the change that's happening in your life. Hopefully that answers that question. For making up your mind, um, marching to the beat of your own drum. You might have to do this on your own. You might have to do something that was unexpected. Okay. All right, let me stack up the cards here. I'm going to give you a choice to vote on the deck that I'm going to use today. I'm going to highlight, I'm going to keep it to three today just because I like the ones that I'm working with. Maybe I'll do four. Um, but uh, 
but I have a pretty clear idea of which ones I think we should be using today. So both of these seemed pretty popular. So I'm gonna let, uh, we'll do Alpha Goddess, the uh, Light Seers. I'll put the Modern Witch deck in here as well, which is more of a traditional um, Rider Waite Smith deck. And I think that might be enough. I'll, I'll also put Sun and Moon. These seem to be good for today. I wanna kind of work with these decks. Um, okay, so let me go ahead quickly and let you take a quick vote on these and then we'll get started. All right, so uh, quick viewer's choice here, which deck? All right, so you can choose the Afro Goddess, which I was using for um, the seven days. So Afro, okay, I need my glasses on. <laughs> Afro Goddess, uh, Tarot Kana. Uh, you can use the Light Seers deck, which is what I was just using for all of the um, elements. Okay, so Light Seers. Uh, we can also look at the Modern Witch deck, which is much more of a sort of plain and simple um, Rider Waite Smith. And finally, we can do the Sun and the Moon deck, which looks like that. All right, so cast your votes, and I'm going to take a quick sip of tea while you're doing that. Again, while you're voting, option one is Afro Goddess. Um, option two, here we go, this is the um, Light Seers. Option three is Modern Witch. Option four is the Sun and the Moon. Um, Okay, so it looks like Light Seers is leading the charge today, and I'm, I'm okay with that. Okay, so we're going to go with the Light Seers deck. You have spoken. Thank you so much for voting. I try to open that up when I can so you guys can enjoy and participate in the selection of decks. I forgot to do this one. I actually really like this as well. We'll, we'll maybe use this for the final word. This is my, um, what is that? It's uh, Rachel True's deck, the True Heart Intuitive. So at the very end, I'll, I'll use that as well. I have a problem of having too many favorites, and I'm sure many of you that read decks have the same problem. <laughs> All right, so we're focusing now on the special topic. This is taking the leap of faith, and this is really kind of opening up to turning a new page. I had both of those kind of as the, the title. So let's take a look here as Apollo is resting in the background and see what's coming through. This is for everybody that's present, if you just joined. Everything that I talked about will be available on replay. You can always rewind if you miss the elemental stuff. It's, it's a little bit earlier. If you like what you see here, please hit the like and subscribe button. If you know anybody that might enjoy this, you can share it so that they know we're doing a live stream right now. All right, making a change, taking a leap of faith. What is the guidance? Got that Knight of Swords coming through again. Or Knight of, yeah, Knight of, Knight of Wands, rather. Thank you so much again to everybody that's kindly giving back with super stickers and super chat. I'll make sure to, uh, to say your names at the end. I just want to focus on the reading presently, but I see you and it means a lot. Thank you. This really is a very colorful deck. So you guys made a good choice on this one. Very beautiful, great imagery. Okay, let me just expand it and then we'll take a look at how all of this relates to you. Hopefully everybody's doing well today. It's good to see you. I'm glad you all took some time today to be with me. Thank you. Really stunning photo there from the Lord Ganesha deck. I forgot to mention I bought a new Oracle deck here. I'll be using it here in just a second. I think it's called like a light activation deck or something like that. This is a new one by Kyle Gray, whatever his newest one is. I'm using that here. So thank you, this is brand new. OK. 
Okay, we got some exciting cards here. Let's take a look at everything that's coming through. Okay, so again, this is a special topic, taking a leap of faith, uh, turning that new page in your life. We have uh, Lord Ganesha in your catalyst position, and that is <laughs> that is a really intense sort of card there. It says understanding, and for many of you, this card is really talking about the importance of like seeing eye to eye on something. And I think that um, you know one thing that gets missed a lot of times in the way that we communicate today is that we focus so much on like nonverbal communication. Uh, I've I've been sometimes frustrated by the lack of uh, kind of like willingness for some people to um, to sort of just like pick up the phone and talk. A lot of times today, people just want to sort of stand back and uh, do like texting or nonverbal sort of communication. This card is really saying, hey, eye to eye co conversations or FaceTime or, a, or the voice on the phone is going to be important. Um, sometimes you just really can't convey what you need to in, unless you can have that um, heart to heart. So that's what we see here. Also, when you really have that face-to-face -face communication, it's harder to say things that are cruel. So if you have to have a difficult conversation, looking eye to eye is going to be so important. Um, so there you go. Look at yourself as well. This is sort of like having a, a long, hard look in the mirror and thinking, do I like where I'm at? Hopefully the answer is yes. And you're like, yes, I do. And, I, and you can practice self-love thinking I'm really grateful for my experiences and all of that. But if there's anything that you look at and you think, I wish I could change it. I always like to take a potential um, regret or feeling of sort of like, oh, that was, a, that was something that I wish I could do again and make it a goal. See if you can get a second chance. Okay. So there you go. And yeah, I'm trying to remember the, the Kyle Gray deck. It was it's off to the side. It's gateway of light activation. So we'll talk about that. That's in relationships. I love him too. I actually have almost all of his Oracle decks. They're really great. They have inclusive imagery and he's a good Oracle deck creator. All right. So center card, Ace of Cups. This is a really interesting story that these two cards tell. So we have Ace of Cups reverse and then we have the Seven of Swords crossing it. Basically, this is your heart. This is your passion. This is what you desire. This is you maybe... For some of you, it's not trust in your heart because this usually shows uh, deception, a lack of trust, trying to get away with something. Your heart is coming through and it's saying, uh, I know what I need to do. I know what we need to, to leap toward. I know what the new page is that we need to turn. But this is the other part of yourself, fear or doubt sitting on this shoulder. You've got two, two different energies here. You should do this. This is what you really want. This is something that's amazing. You'll never do it. Um, you're not smart enough. You're too old. It's going to take too much time or energy or money. So these are the two warring forces, but this is the central card. It's stronger than this. So the main thing that you want to focus on is trusting who you are, what you want, and how you're going to get there. Okay. Um, and by doing that, some amazing things can happen. The heart knows, trust it. Um, some of you need to balance out your, your heart chakra a little bit. So you might just be uh, getting over grief, disappointment, there may be just a lot going on and you're feeling really sensitive or vulnerable. So give yourself the time and space that you need to get that heart to center in a good place and then trust it, nurture it, and allow it to kind of like get you in the right direction. Here's the good thing. With this at the center, you are a magnet. If I get the lovers, the ace of cups, um, any of the court cards in this, like we're looking at some good stuff here. So people are interested in what you have to offer. Some of you are afraid of what you might how you might be uh, perceived, or if your heart might be broken again, or if you might be disappointed again. When the, when the card is crossing it, it has a muted or a subtle energy. So I don't necessarily know if the Seven of Swords is, it doesn't feel like it's actually happening. It feels like there's a fear of it. So what you're gonna do instead is think, you know what, I'm smarter now, I've been through it, especially for those of you that, um, who was it that got the, uh, in the Nine of Wands? Uh, whoever got the nine of wands this this month, I would say this is your your kind of like uh, significator that's saying like I I've learned what I needed to and I'm not going to go down that path again. Um, I am stronger this time. I'm ready. I think it was fire, wasn't it this month? So uh, just remember, all of us can kind of remember to learn from our past mistakes, okay? And also to pick up on the warning signs earlier than later. If you meet with somebody um, and you just don't get a good vibe, trust your heart water. Thank you. Um, so yeah, for the water signs, when we were getting that, just, just be strong. Actually, no, I thought that water was, um, water was different. I thought this month, but anyway, let's not worry about it. Um, back to what I was saying. Um, if you see someone and you don't trust it, 
I think it's going to be really, really important for you to say, I have some questions. Um, I want to focus on making sure that I understand this and this before I commit to that. Okay. That is going to be the most important thing. Don't go into something when your heart is afraid that it might not be the right choice. Okay. So always put it out there. Yes. Thank you. I thought it was fire. Thank you so much. But it's a message for all of us. Um, so really this month, um, don't push yourself into something that you don't believe. Don't will something out of existence if you're just afraid of it. And if you meet someone and you get a vibe that doesn't feel right, then figure out why that's there because that usually is something that's accurate. Okay. Moving on, looking at deep past, we have the queen of uh, pentacles. She's in reverse. So for many of you, you are deciding to prioritize yourself. And you maybe have been really focusing on that a lot because you could have been lacking that sort of maternal energy in your life or you're just really ready to do something. And it takes a lot of work. If you're, if you're going to school, if you're trying to get fit, if you're trying to work on creating something, um, again, whether it's a, a project or you're building something, it takes a lot out of you. So make sure that you're nurturing yourself, you're building yourself back up, and then do make an attempt to occasionally look and see what's going on around you. The only thing with any of the court cards in reverse is that they can be so focused internally that they are missing something on the uh, external. The, the thing is we have a king of pentacles here. So there's this big partnership opportunity coming. So I want you to make sure that you're awake and aware. She's very tuned in, but she isn't looking around. So there, it's kind of interesting. Spirituality can go both ways. You can be so focused on the metaphysics that you're missing the actual physical. So make sure that there's the balance between um, physical and metaphysical um, and that you're actually picking up on the signs that are already around you, not what's kind of out in outer space. Okay. So open your eyes, take a walk, talk. Um, all of those things are going to be important. But I do love that she's been spending time figuring out who she is, what she wants, creating those antlers that we see there and uh, really tuning in. OK, so trust what you've been receiving. I feel like we talked at great length about this card. Um, the card is reversed now. So for many of you, uh, when we're looking at the recent past, some of you might have been taught that to be different is not uh, strength, is not acceptable, is maybe even something that isn't beautiful or whatever. I'm here to tell you it's the exact opposite. It is what makes you different that what is what really makes you popular or memorable or impactful. So really lean into your singular energy approach or vision. And that is going to be what sets the tempo. If we're thinking of a metronome here or the, the drum, it's going to set the tempo for the, the change that you want to make in your life. So you have to trust your heart. You have to trust those with whom you partner. Trust that you've done enough work on yourself and then don't be afraid to be as bold as you want to be. OK, then we see a really great card in your crowning position. We see like a graduation here. Remember, I was talking about the Joey's, the four and the 10 month cycles that they're in. So with the, with that sort of cyclical energy that's shifting for you, it feels that like by the time the 10 month energy comes through, um, you've actually kind of achieved this King of Pentacles. A little aside here, I, sh I should have said this earlier. Although I do these every week, the, the sort of special topics can be timeless readings. So, you know, a lot of what I'm talk talking about isn't just for seven days. This can kind of get us into the new year. So feel, feel free to kind of come back here and listen to this whenever you need it, as well as any of my old ones. You can go straight to the special topic if it catches your eye, because there's, there's good energy with that um, that can be used at any time. So this, again, based on what I was looking at earlier, could be more around the 10 month mark. Plus, um, court cards can be 10, ones and tens. So, um, yeah, uh, we could see things happening really quickly or, again, in three quarters of a year, some big shifts. This is very auspicious for those of you that are deciding to do something on your own. Entrepreneurial energy, for sure. Midas touch, for sure. Loyalty is going to play a big role here. So I feel like you're going to sort through the fear of whatever's going on and find something that feels like home, something that feels cozy. Right, Apollo? <laughs> As he kind of digs in there and makes his own sort of comfy space. He's like, Dad, don't put me in the spotlight. Um, but I was looking at the dog here. Sometimes he's not always here when I do this card, but he is. So you're, when we're looking at someone that is loyal, that you can trust, okay? So that's going to be really important. And yes, we're not even looking at love per se in this particular reading. But if you were looking for a partnership, I see one coming. 
the thing is you're very similar. Um, and what I see here is that one of you is very focused on self and one of you is just very focused on making a comfortable space. And it's kind of a little bit more at ease. We see the age and we see the wisdom in this King of Pentacles. We see a little bit more youth and a little bit more um, focus on self. So if you are looking at partnerships, I definitely see mentor mentee energy here. It doesn't have to be like a big difference of age. It could just be like six, eight, 10 years, but I do see a very different mental state. So in partnerships, there could be someone that I'm not going to say they're not motivated. They're just not as anxious, not as in much of a hurry as you are, uh, perhaps. Or you may be mentoring someone who has this, this drive and you're sort of like, slow it down. It's going to be fine. We're going to take our time. It's going to be all right. With age, you worry a little less about trying to get it all done, burning out that candle. Because at a certain point, you know, the wick is done and there's nothing, there's no more wax to burn. So there's a little bit of, of uh, guidance here, which is to just, you know, we're talking about pacing yourself, pace yourself. He's not hurried. He knows how to maximize. And um, perhaps he can teach this other person a little bit of that energy of, of taking it easy. Okay. Slow is not always bad, especially if you're going to build something that, that uh, really, really matters. Okay. Strong earth energy coming through here. We talked about the grounding with the um, kangaroo, and now I'm seeing two earth signs coming in here. And it could also just be the grounding energy, but definitely a part of this. All right, so some of you might be approaching your solo return. Happy birthday if you are. Um, some of you might just be looking at uh, starting something new, or you might be having a baby, because this is the card of uh, like a birthday, a baby. Also like really getting strong and trusting yourself. Like, okay, I know who I am. I know who I am enough to not care uh, as much if people accept me or not. Or not, I'm, I'm connected to source. So focus on really being bold and trusting yourself because looking again at the main topic, I always try to anchor this into the topic. If you're going to take a leap of faith, you must know who you are. And if you want other people to take that leap with you, they have to believe that you believe who you are and that you believe where you're going. And the belief is all in this card here. Um, you trust yourself, you know yourself, and you're going to embrace that. Uh, and again, birthing. For some of you, this could indicate it kind of aligns nicely with what I was talking about with the Joey, nine months or 10 months. Um, so nine to 10 months for something to come to fruition or for you to kind of like let go of something. Okay. I like all of this. The card is upright. There's nothing to worry about. You have two great cards in the future and the near future. So this is future near future rather than this is like outcome, final final outcome. So to get the sun and to get the empress, really great energies. And we kind of have the world card here within this empress. So whatever you're trying to release, there's something bigger to come, all right? Definitely good energy for anyone that's trying to get pregnant or to try to birth something figuratively. I like that we got both like mother and child or uh, in this particular spread. All right, now it's time to get real when we look at the energy that's representing you. And this one kind of matches what I'm wearing. <laughs> so we have the five of wands, getting to work, getting busy. But let's go ahead and just revisit what I what I showed you a moment ago. I imagine this five of wands to be like the living bridge that we saw here with the ants. So what if this is the five of wands? It's not competition. It's actually you being able to get further by leaning on others. You can even see a, a cooler example of it here. Like they're able to reach across in a way that they couldn't otherwise do. So that is five of wands at its best. Um, not, comp not competing, but collaborating and cooperating. And we kind of see it here. They are holding one another up. Now, some of them are focused on other things, but these three seem to be focused on that. So I think for you, if you can create that living bridge of energy in your friends, your family, and your core group, chosen family as well. That's what's going to matter. You can get further, farther, faster with that community energy. The community energy is not just in the five of wands. It's hidden within the eight of wands. Those wands are coming from somewhere. There's usually other people involved there. So we see it a lot of times in the five. We see it a lot in the four. We see it in the six, but it's actually also in the eight. So you can leapfrog from this to the eight of wands, which is things happening quicker. And that's really what we're hoping to do. Okay, so don't get lost in the shuffle. Use the energy around you to kind of like, so everybody can go further. 
some of you may be deciding to go back to school. You might be deciding to, uh, to develop your skills a little bit more. You also might be deciding to write, like I said earlier, curriculums, uh, any sort of uh, dissertation, documentation, some sort of like a, a journal publication, et cetera. I like what I see here. Anything that you decide to do to better yourself is invariably almost, again, nine times out of 10 returned from the eight of pentacles. So I feel very good about that energy around you. There's some sort of a lesson in your environment right now. So you all, all you have to do is kind of decide, have I learned the lesson? So because this came up in your environment, if you've learned the lesson, you can release it. So if you're in a kind of crazy work relationship or if you're in a weird romantic relationship and, and you think to yourself, this drives, this drives me crazy, but I've learned this, this and this, and I think I'm done. I think I'm done with this now. I think I'm ready to move on. Then you get to graduate. And so graduation is at hand here if you want to. There is a lesson. Have you learned it? Some of you are choosing to, to take on education. That's different. But symbolically, you might be decide, uh, deciding to just let something go. Okay? I like that. Looking at hopes, fears, and opportunities. Hello, Moon Card. I think I recognize you. <laughs> so don't be afraid. It's exactly in the same... Because I was looking at blocks before. Now it's in fears. Um, so what we don't want to feel with the Moon Card is that sort of energetic energy of, oh, my goodness. And she's kind of feeling like weighed down. What we also see are the dog and the wolf um, equally being uh, drawn to their sort of instinctual side. You have to move past the training in your in your mind and go back into the intuition. That's why we we see two different like again they have a common ancestor, but one has been <laughs> one has been domesticated. Um, yes, that's you, buddy. Um, and the other one is wild. So uh, when we're looking at that sort of combination of uh, wild versus domesticated, what they share in common are certain instincts. We saw Apollo digging in his bed a couple minutes ago. He moved to the other one. He's like, enough with the camera, Dad. Um, but he was digging in his bed. That's something that terrier breeds will do. Um, and uh, that's just so that they can create a nice, safe nest. So uh, for you, you're going to have a good instinct to do something right. This is a nesting card, by the way. So some of you might find a new place to call home. It could be a relationship. It could be a job. It could be an actual physical home. So trust your nesting instinct. Um, thank you, Apollo, for giving us what we need on that. It, it definitely helps, okay? So let go of fear, frustration, and, and, um, and anything of that nature. Trust the instinct. It's guiding you in the right direction, okay? Enough with that. Let's look at your outcome card. And don't worry, at the very end, I'll also pull a big idea on this one. But for the outcome card here, we have the Empress. And I like that she combines like three different cards, actually. So we see the uh, the moon, we see, which is saying, hey, it's going to be all right, you're being guided. We see the world symbolizing what she's giving birth to. And then we, of course, see the Empress as well. So it's, a, it's at all parts of the spectrum, basically here. So for you, what we see is it takes time to create this leap, this change. Emotions could run high during this, but you're learning to tune into what you need to, and you're going to see this through. You might be doing it on your own as well, because this is a card of independence, just like um, this is, okay? So I feel very positive about you being able to see this next part of the journey through and, uh, and, and make something wonderful happen, okay? Let's move on to the expanded forecast to just um, sharpen up this message a little bit. Okay, looking at health, uh, which is mind, body, and spirit, we have honor your feelings. Let me just put on my glasses for the lower portion of this. We have um, Archangel Haniel on this one. It says, thank you, Haniel, for supporting me as I honor my emotions. So because we got no less than two moon cards, plus we got the moon showing up on that last one, this is really about the mental health and the emotional health. So I think more than your body, it's going to be important what your mind and what your heart is feeling right now, heart figuratively speaking as in emotions. So take care of that and everything else is going to be okay. Um, and if you need help, lean on others. Again, I loved that I didn't clear out that image from, uh, from Leo. I think that's really cool to see the living bridge. It's going to be important. Okay. Let me look at some additional messages around health and specifically health and can I make this change in my life happen? So the number one thing here, and we're going to talk more about this card now a little differently. Get honest with yourself. 
The seven of swords can sometimes be the little white lie that we tell to ourselves. I'll do that tomorrow, or I'm ready to let go of this. So this really isn't affecting me the way it is. Um, there's something in your life that you probably could do a little bit better on. And this card is saying, own it, do it, release it. Once you do that, things start to fall into place. Um, that's really important. Queen of Pentacles, much like King of Pentacles when reversed, has a tendency to overindulge. So a lot of stress and change is happening in the world right now. Sometimes we go to things that we shouldn't for support. So maybe that's over drinking, overeating. There could be some other substance abuse that's going on. Um, if there's any of that going on, just take care of that. And this is just a moderation card in general. We have the holiday season upon us. So you may have no like major issues, but it's just saying, be kind to your body. Don't overdo it. It is like an elastic band. We don't want it to snap over the holidays. So easy does it. Again, standard disclaimers with all the health cards you want to talk to someone if you feel anything going on, of course. We have a lot of fertility energy that's coming through. So um, for many of you, I feel like if there's been issues with that, uh, and the moon card can actually indicate challenges with that, the emotional side is more important. So focus on getting emotionally where you need to for that. But, but it's obviously a journey and it's different for everyone. For the rest of us, solar plexus. Hello, it couldn't be any more obvious. This is this. This is the sun, solar plexus, and this is her belly is really front and center. So I want you to focus on strength, strength strengthening the core. This is going to help you in what you're doing. So um, you can do mat based stuff if you're um, if you don't want to use you know weights or anything. So yoga and Pilates are great for that. Um, and anything that your unique body will say yes or no to, you got to trust your inner self on that one. But solar plexus will help you through the next phase of the journey. And um, by the way, for health messages, this often has to do with uh, the UI track, uh, reproductive organs. So take a look at that if anything's going wrong, obviously. But more importantly, it's emotions. So when we're looking at it in the bigger picture here, strengthening the core, pulling up your posture a little bit, and then focusing on your emotional health, those are the most important things you can do to hit a home run, okay? Let's look at your wealth card. Light activation here, we have Sanat Kamara here and it says shine your light, your internal guidance is coming through loud and clear. So especially when people around you don't seem to be kind of doing what they should be doing, if you've received the internal guidance that I need to do this, I need to do that, trust that. We can see the little light codes and downloads coming there. By the way, I've, I've had this happen a few times to me where for those of you that are a little bit more intuitively attuned, you've probably felt this where you might be sleeping. You can sometimes hear, a, I've heard a high tone before, or I've kind of just felt this big, it's almost like a bolt of energy or lightning that comes through you. You can have that kind of light activation happening. Um, so when that happens, a lot of times you, it's because you're in alignment with your soul path. So this is a signal for some of you that you need to do more of what you're doing, or there, there could be a calling that comes through. You might be called to be doing healing work or inspirational work or something where you're helping other people like teaching or um, uh, you know, being a nurse or a doctor or a therapist. So all of that could be part of it. Specific messages for wealth. Again, make sure that you trust the people that you work with and trust your instincts. You have pretty good instincts on how to create something. Remember when we were looking back at the seven day forecast, we had the queen of wands coming through, um, just being able to be resourceful queen of wands and the wheel of fortune for Saturday and Sunday. So you really want to be looking at your money and managing it yourself. Don't give away the keys to your financial kingdom. You need to make sure that you're signing those checks. Uh, I do see opportunity for development and growth. I like the eight of pentacles. It's the main uh, money card outside of the court cards. So I feel like you're going to be entering into a really good period here as you try something new. Let me see if there's anything else. So it's an, it's not as com conspicuous as the the um, the star card, but it is pretty conspicuous. The sun tells me that you you deserve to be seen. You're going to be seen, and so to get more comfortable and confident and just having conversations is going to be um, ever so important. So try to celebrate <clears throat> and uh, kind of have fun with getting up there and talking if you can. Practice that if you need to. Okay. All right. Um, pretty good. I have to say pretty good for all of you. And again, there's this overarching energy of doing it on your own, or there's a step-up opportunity that a lot of you need right now. 
Okay. So I think that uh, if you've ever felt like you can't, this card is saying, yes, you can. All right. Let me go ahead now and take a look at love. So let's see how relationships are going to play a role in this next part of the journey. So this is the new deck that I'm using here for this one. We have an earth gateway, no less, opening up on this one. It says learning experiences, wisdom transmission, earth intelligence, and it's the Gaia gateway um, activation. So the card was reversed. One of the things that I told you that you want to be focusing on right now is this connection to like grounding yourself. What is your, what is your core message? What is your core focus? So some of you may have lost that. We sometimes get wrapped up in other people's sort of journeys. And this is about planting your feet on your path and walking the path that you're supposed to finding that and getting a little bit more um, in that sort of energy. And then of course, we have the learning experiences, which came through with the eight of pentacles. So for those of you that are deciding to go back to school, it's a nod to that. We have the wisdom transmission, which actually came through here in the light codes transmission. And then we have um, earth intelligence, which is really all about that grounded energy that we see with the king and the queen of pentacles. So taking it straight to love, this is the kind of partnership that I was talking about. But it is there is something interesting here where one partner supporting the other in their learning path. So this is learning when it's reversed. It's not always selfishness. It can just be development. Based on the cards, it's especially more on that side as I'm looking at everything. So this is ostensibly many of you. It's probably you. And so what you're looking for in partnerships, friendships, business relationships, and then also love is someone who is willing to support you and allow you to take that path. So if they can and they will, then you've actually found gold. And that's a good thing. And you found someone that you can trust. Okay. So I think that's the most important thing. You don't have to doubt your heart on this one. And no one should be doubting yours either. They should be trusting why you want to do what you're doing. If they don't understand you or they lack the emotional IQ to sort of do that, then you know that that's the, the sort of litmus test that you need to say yes or no. Judgment is coming through again. So for many of you, I think that was on Thursday. You'll have to think about what am I going to do? What, how, do I, how do I feel about this? And by the end of the week, you're going to know like where you stand. Okay. And all, also one other thing that's interesting, if you've ever had like a, uh, if you've ever watched over a, a kid, someone that's younger, or even when I, you can catch this in adults, if they try to say something, the eyes can't lie. Um, sometimes people roll their eyes. Sometimes they, they look really scared. Sometimes they're a little bit angry. Um, the eyes tell the truth. So I believe in relationships this month, you can look at someone in the eyes and tell if you can trust them or where they're standing on something. So this eye to eye contact keeps playing an important role in the next part of your journey. Uh, face to face, your, your eye contact is going to be really important as I look straight at the camera. So make sure that people can see who you are, what you're saying, and really kind of project out from the soul that that's what you believe. That's where you are. Let's look at it from three perspectives and then we'll move on to the final card and then get into the next part of this reading. So I typically like to look at this for people that are in a relationship, looking for a relationship or are single and happy. <clears throat> this is a little different today. So I want to look at it more in the, in the, the light of when we look at relationships, it's not love because we're looking at turning a new corner. You can still kind of read it as love as I'm looking at this, but what I'm going to look at it as is the right person to kind of help you on that journey. So if you're with someone, are they the right person? If not, are you going to look for someone? Or if you're doing it solo, what can you do to bring some support in your life? Okay, you can still kind of read it as love, but I do want it to be a little bit broader because you picked a topic that was broader. <clears throat> Let me take a quick drink and we're going to do that right now. <clears throat> okay, so if you're already in a relationship, we've talked about it. It feels pretty good to me. It does look like you have a support, uh, a, someone that you can that can support you and you can lean on. They may also need some support too for things that are going on in their life. So remember, it's give and take, give and take. Um, one thing that is interesting is if there is a young child in the mix here for some of you, that does create a sort of shift of responsibility. And also when you decide to, to create something, this child can also be a business, for instance. 
So when you decide to bring something new into the mix, you're both going to have to be on board with that. It looks good to me. The Sun and the Empress are two really great cards for this. So I know that you believe in it, but you need to get that other person, make sure that they're, get some validation from them from them to make sure that they're on um, the same sort of like mental train as you. With the Seven of Swords and the Moon, we want to be careful here. This is being afraid. Um, the Moon is sometimes a fear card and the Seven of Swords is crossing the heart. So you should be able to trust what your heart is telling you. They should be able to speak in a safe and honest way. So keep the communication open and remind one another that as long as that honesty and that communication exists, you're going to be A-OK. -okay. But there is a little bit of a shadow from the past so that you want to be careful of. By and large, I like what I see. Just got to put in the work, right? And, and hold each other up on that. So it looks pretty good. Partnerships look pretty good. But I do feel like there can be a little bit more... Um, be more honest and be more vulnerable with one another because that's what these honesty and vulnerability. I think if you can improve that in the relationship, it'll be better. All right, looking at those of you that are seeking out a partnership to help you with something, um, the well, here's the interesting thing. You don't really need someone. Um, you can probably do this on your own. Some of you may hire someone younger. The Sun card can be a college graduate, for instance, or an intern. So you could be able to hire also someone that could um, learn from you. Um, you know, maybe there is a, a, an apprenticeship, you're going to bring in an apprentice. So for some of you, rather than pulling in an equal partner, you might be pulling in someone that you could train and then maybe hire on eventually. And the truth here, though, is that you need to maintain autonomy and leadership and uh, vocal sort of force in this new page in your in your life. But I do see for many of you, you want to you want to create. We can't get any clearer than a baby and a mother here in creation. So making sure that you, knowing that you can do this on your own is key. Um, and then knowing that you can also bring younger people or younger energy in to help with this, I think will also be key. If you're single, happy, and kind of going on this on your own, I already said you can do it. I actually feel like you have a lot of support. How are you going to organize the support around you? Put some stuff into writing too. Um, write down like job descriptions, expectations, um, also, this is about manifestation. All of that matters. So overall, relationships are good. And yes, if you're looking for love, you can find love. <laughs> I'll just answer that. The main thing here, though, is you both are very busy and it feels like you're really kind of connected to work right now. So the most important relationship this month is loving and nurturing yourself, honoring the path that you've built, having open and honest communication with those uh, around you. So it's it's very much about you. And I do see a great earth energy coming through for all of you this month. So again, whether this is a like a, a father figure, paternal energy, or a mentor, or a friend, I like what I see here, okay? It's just a choice on what you want to do with it. And you need to kind of figure that out for yourselves. All right, let's go to the final card here. We're going to look at destiny. And we have a playful energy here with Loki. <laughs> all right, so... As you probably know, now because of the Marvel Universe, almost everybody knows Loki. Um, he's the trickster god um, and isn't always to be trusted. Things are not always what they seem. One thing that Loki does that I like is that he, he's a shapeshifter. So he's willing to try on a persona um, and have fun with it. So if we look at the, the nicest and lightest and most positive read that I could give you from Loki, it would be... Don't be afraid to get in the sandbox and have fun. Try it. He doesn't care. He, he makes a fool of himself all the time, but it doesn't matter. He gets the last laugh. So you keep trying it until you master it. That's, that's how you get the final laugh with the Loki energy. Now, uh, we see play here, but he is a trickster, and there are two trickster cards that came through, Seven of Swords and Moon. You probably will see it coming when these energies approach you. So what you want to do when you see the seven of swords or the moon energy in your own life is to basically kind of remember we had judgment and all of that coming through. You're going to and, and justice reverse say, no, this doesn't work with me. Just simply put your foot down if someone's trying that kind of stuff. And then also justice reverse is uh, balancing the scales and doing what's right. Um, so especially for my air signs out there, um, it's going to be important for you to just simply say, I let this go before. I'm not going to let it go again. We need to actually change this. So when you see someone acting a fool or doing something wrong, that's when you want to say it. 
not two weeks, two months, two years later, because you can correct it in the moment, but you can't correct it later. And I think that's the important thing there. But, but by and large, Loki is saying, have fun with yourself. Try something new. Shape shift. Okay? Cool. Final card, and then we're going to go into, or well, not the final card, but the big idea. And then we're going to go into your meditation, and then I'll look at the final card. All right. So for the big idea, it's also really the answer to your question earlier. How can you really make this leap of faith? What's What's the thing that you can focus on, not just for the next seven days, but the next seven months to really make this happen? Okay, we like this. Three of pentacles. Um, notice how the signals are mixed on this. This isn't what a normal uh, light should look like. It should be like the red light should be reversed, right? Red, yellow, green. Um, so there's some mixed signals. So one thing not to do is to send mixed signals. One thing to do is to focus on doing what you need and, and not necessarily looking for the external validation. This is a card of being recognized, but when it's its most powerful, it's because you're recognized for something that it's just solid quality. It wasn't, it wasn't done for the express purpose of like six of wands or star. It just really is perfect because it's you and because it's honest. So be authentic, put your heart and soul into it. Don't send mixed signals. And we also see the learning energy coming through for this teaching and learning as a part of this journey for a lot of you. So you might be pulling in someone in your life that needs that extra tutelage or, or help, et cetera. And um, I think that's actually in perfect alignment here. So put it in writing, put it in action, do it because it's the right thing. Don't send mixed signals and don't do it for the express purpose of recognition. And lo and behold, you'll probably get recognized. It's going to be worth it. You're going to learn a lot from this and people will be interested in what you're doing. Okay. That's the, that's a big idea here. Um, some of you are putting out something though, that could be these two cards together could show something that's put into production. Uh, so whether it's like an Etsy shop or you're publishing something or you're producing or distributing something, I like what I see with this. Uh, and this can also be higher education. So you decide to go even further down that rabbit hole once you do this, which is great. Okay. Looks good. Great energy. I hope you guys enjoyed that. We're going to do a couple of more things here before we're done. So stick around. Um, there, the, the next two parts are going to be a quick meditation and then I'm going to answer your fi final question. So before we do anything, write down what your final question is. This is your chance to ask something to me, okay? Uh, just a couple of notes before we meditate. Uh, I don't do this that often, so I'm just gonna say please. <laughs> At this point, I see we roughly have half of the folks. Uh, you can only hit it once, so if, you, if you've if you already hit it, thank you. If you haven't, please do the thumbs up, the like button. Should be right around the title. And if you're brand new, hit that subscribe button. Um, I have roughly 70% of the people that watch that don't subscribe, which boggles my mind. So I'd love to see the subscriber number go up a bit. It will help my channel um, it grow and I can do more videos for you. So I want to start a podcast next year. So in order to kind of get this going, I want to see the channel grow a little bit more. So let's do it. Let's do it together. Um, if you're watching later, you can hit thanks and give back a little bit. Thank you to everybody that's already giving back. Like I said, at the very end, I will say your names individually, but you can continue to do that right now. Just like uh, we see right there. Thank you so much. Okay. And finally, uh, if you missed any of the channel messages, they'll be on replay, but you can also see them on my social media uh, networks, okay? And I already pinned that comment from Dakota there uh, in the chat, so you can see that there. Okay, let's go ahead now and uh, get ready for the meditation. One more poll before we do that, and then I'll look at the final card. So for this poll, uh, I, I do a two-minute meditation with you, so um, feel free to vote on the instrument if you'd like. Which instrument? And then, like I said, I'll answer the final question. So I have a singing bowl and a crystal pyramid. Either one that you choose is fine by me. All right, I'm quickly gazing at all of the cards in front of me to see what would be nice for today's meditation. Um, I love the light activation. We have a lot of lunar cards with the moon. Um, the one that's really calling to me though is the sun. If we look at this, notice how it's almost like she's holding up a balloon or she's connected to this solar energy. So we're going to do a solar meditation here to help you build the strength and the confidence that you need in order to make something amazing happen in your life. So um, close your eyes and I want you to imagine that you're in this beautiful rolling green field. Yesterday we were in Scotland. Maybe we can be in Ireland today or um, 
yeah, just imagine that it's summertime, rolling hills, there's no rain today, um, beautiful soft green grass beneath you, and the sky is completely clear, just a big, bright, orange-yellow uh, sun in front of you. So take a moment and sit however you feel comfortable. You can lay down or you can sit cross-legged, and I want you to just uh, connect for a moment with your body, taking a nice deep breath, really connecting to the earth since there was so much with the earth. Imagine that like a tree, you're planting some sort of energetic root or anchor into the ground. I want you to pull up some of that energy from the center of the earth. There's actually fire at the center of our planet, that molten core. So pull that strong fiery energy from the center of the earth. Inhale. Imagine like a dragon, you're going to exhale and you can see that fire energy wrap around you and move around you, creating this halo, several halos of yellow energy. And now focusing on the sun above you, see that there's a single ray of light connecting to the stomach, to the belly. For any of you that are trying to create something, imagine that this is giving more life or energy to that which you seek to bring forth, a project, love, a child, whatever. You're seeing that the it's going to be more fruitful. It's going to be easier. Feel that if there was any sort of tension that you've been holding in your heart, in your, um, in your solar plexus, even in your second or first chakras, that as the sun starts to shine in this area, you see that everything is just starting to ease. It's kind of like butter. It's all melting away, and you just get this feeling that you're going to be all right. Lay down if you can, or just sit back into your chair and feel um, slowly that each and every muscle is kind of uh, releasing. And I'll walk you through it before I play the singing bowl here in just a moment, which one. So thank you. All right, so I want you to take a nice deep breath. Inhale. On the exhale, relax your shoulders, your neck, and your back. Relax your tongue. Let it just fall to the front of your mouth. Uh, let your, your cheek muscles, your, your eyes, even your scalp, everything just sort of relax and fall uh, so that you are just present without any sort of tension, any sort of thoughts. Let your thoughts drift away like clouds in the sky. Let your breath become... Um, deep, but don't focus on it too much. Just really enjoy each and every moment of this meditation. And now as you feel the warmth in your belly, I want you to imagine that you are calling forth, you are bringing forth, you are getting closer to whatever it is that you seek to create. And that by the end of this meditation, you're going to be one step further, if not many steps further. Allow the sun to show you the way. And perhaps it has a message to bring to you as well. So just close your eyes and be open to receiving love, light, and abundance in the highest forms. Imagine now that your energy is as light as a feather, that you could almost be carried away by the wind towards whatever it is that you're trying to see happen in your life. Take a moment to allow the wind to move you towards that. Feel that each step that you take, each breath that you take as well, is bringing you just a little bit closer to that uh, spot on the horizon. Feeling that your body is lighter and brighter, both energetically and actually. There's just less weight to carry because you're, you're feeling a little bit of a pep in your step like the kangaroo. When you're ready, you can gently open your eyes. Bring yourself back in your body. 
Rub your hands together, left hand on your heart, right hand on, on top of that. Nice big sigh and exhale. Really just uh, feeling the aggregate of all the work that we've done together today. Last card, last opportunity to ask something. Keep it internal. Meditate on what it is that you want me to look at. Look at what you've written or just say it in your head. I'm going to pull one final card to answer that question for you. Lovely card here. Uh, we have the Three of Cups coming through, which is a yes. Um, this is actually usually indicative of a celebration, something to be happy about. So for many of you, there's someone coming into your life or something coming into your life. Um, Three of Cups can have very positive connotations. And um, with, uh, with what we're looking at here as they're kind of looking up at the sky here as well, for many of you, you're finding sort of like it could be a chosen family or this sort of it's a new things are going to start to click. You might be finding like a new click of people to hang out with. I like this. Um, the only thing that I would say with the three of cups sometimes is to just make sure that you're being inclusive. If you feel left out, realize that people may not be trying to do it on purpose. So uh, fight for your, your sort of equal footing at the table. This is your time. This is your opportunity. Um, but I like what I see here quite a bit. So I would say, yes, I see someone new coming into your life and I see a reason or a cause for celebration. And um, with this, there's the power of networking that you have to think about. So make sure that you do say yes to some of the invitations out there. If you are starting anything new, it starts gently first. So there's not a lot of commitment in the Three of Cups. It's usually a card that I would associate with ca like casual dating or starting something new. And like any friendship or any dating or any sort of engagement, it begins slowly and you get to know each other. So try to enjoy the process of getting to know, getting to know yourself, getting to know others and getting to know like this new phase in your journey. Have some fun. Loki came through once again, even in this card. Be playful. See where it takes you, right? So I like the kind of uh, combination of energy that came through with this. Pretty good. It could be three months for some of you, looking at the Three of Cups, very much in alignment with the uh, kangaroo message, three to four months. Remember, there were two points the kangaroo showed us, four and ten. Four months are when the joeys can um, get out there and start to move around a little bit, but eight months is when they can fend for themselves. So we're looking at uh, three to four months when things start to come through and people start to come through when you're starting to have that attractive energy. Okay. Great reading today. I have to say, like, I really enjoy the Sunday collectives. I love all the interaction here. And uh, I love being able to kind of take a deeper dive with all of you. And thank you for being patient. I not, know not everybody does longer reads on YouTube, um, but share the word that these are kind of fun if you like it, because I hope more people can uh, continue to enjoy what we're doing. Okay, a couple of quick notes here. I'm going to put my schedule link again, just so you know if this is your first time here, uh, what's coming through here. So we've got, um, here's the upcoming schedule. I'm going to quickly pin that so you've got it. Um, so for the next week, I will be doing the following signs. Libra, on, uh, I'm sorry, Virgo on Monday, that's December 13th. Libra on December 16th and Scorpio on December 17th. So that's Monday, Thursday, and Friday. And then next Sunday, of course, another collective reading. Okay, so I will uh, take some time today to make sure that all of these weeks, this week's rather, links are posted um, and you can actually click on them and you'll see them here on the YouTube. But I believe Virgo is already clickable and you can set the reminder for that. So feel free to do that feel free to join me. I'm always here at 9 a.m. Pacific. I saw there was a question earlier. So it is Pacific time zone that it's listed in. So you can always do a Google to figure out what that is in your zone. And uh, thank you so much. Thank you everybody for showing up today as well. Again, I would love for you to like and subscribe and share and comment later. All of these things do help the channel. You hear every creator on YouTube asking for it, but it really does help in a big way. So thank you in advance. I'd like to take a couple moments here just to give back um, some gratitude and thank everybody that either joined as a new channel member or gave back a little bit in the way of a contribution today. So let me start with channel members. I'm going to mention anybody that joined or rejoined within the last day. So it looks like we have a couple of new members here. Let's see. Okay. So Venetia Tyson, welcome back. Um, after eight months, it looks like you rejoined. We have uh, Tina as well, Tina P here, um, brand new, joined today and uh, Sansi as well. Thank you so much for joining brand new as well. 
Okay, let's take a look now at those of you that were kind enough to give back a little bit. I know that we usually have a decent amount here, so I'll try to work through it at a, a decent click, but uh, here we go. Starting at the beginning, um, Susie or Susie S, thank you so much for your contribution. Georgiana, I appreciate the 20, thank you. Megan Pompu, appreciate it. Um, let's see, Wanda, Wanda Diane, it looks like, thank you, appreciate it. C Megan 72, uh, Robin Redman, Lydia Fitzgerald, um, let's see, Heidi Joe Brown, thank you. Um, Regina, many thanks, and I appreciate that 50 and, and the consistency there. It's so appreciated. Thank you. Um, I'll teach you anime, um, NS, Renee, Mary Jo Poole, Allison Brooks, Sash. Uh, big thanks again also to Golden Ratio for the 100. That's, uh, I think that's the most I've ever received. Thank you so much. Annalie Holm, at least at once. I know sometimes people will do a couple in a row, but thank you so much. Annalie Holm, on Frude, um, Crystal McKnight, Yas, <laughs> Kathy Aaron, thank you very much for the 50 as well. Um, Wendy Wright, Simone Muller, Beverly Kendall, let's see, Anna, Anna Lies, thank you very much. Sturman, I think is how you say that. Um, Jody Frazi, much appreciated. Uh, Farron Aziz, uh, Misba Noor, T. Bruce, J uh, Jen G, Wendy's Workshop Web, uh, Bernadette Evans, Karen's Terravision, Amy K, Chioko B, 62 and Sunny, uh, Shana Willock, two in a row, thank you very much, uh, K Shanti, Yvette Sanchez, Jeannie Hart, let's see, Knowledge, AB, let's see, Lena, one, two, three, uh, 214, sorry, uh, Leonie Lung, uh, AB, and Costa7. I think I got everyone. And again, I really appreciate, we got a, a few people today that came through with um, both 50 and 100. I appreciate that so much. And if I forgot to say your name, know that I do see it and I will look at it later. Um, so much, much appreciation for all of that. Uh, if I mispronounce any names, sorry, I'm trying to read really small text here and do it at a decent uh, clip here. So thank you to Dakota and Maria for showing up and for moderating today. I appreciate your time and energy. Thank you everybody for being a part of this. I hope to see you in the monthlies. A reminder that all of the December readings are already live on my channel and on my website. So you can check it out if you need to look at that. And I'm doing all of the Januaries now. All of the Januaries, by the way, do include a little bit of 2022 sneak peeks. So uh, make sure you're watching them. All right, take care everyone. And again, join me on the New Year's special. Um, I will be doing something on New Year's Eve. So we'll be looking at the year ahead and I'll do a much deeper dive at that time. Thank you, Linda, for wrapping this up in a lovely way. Linda, her for the $49.99. I appreciate it. All right, everyone, take care of yourselves. I'm going to take a walk with this little furry guy here who's napping <laughs> and rolled up in a little um, bun there. So thank you so much. All right, bye-bye. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.